since 1875, fans have flocked to the Kentucky Derby the first Saturday in May. Over a century later, it's become much more than the greatest two minutes in sport. It's a week-long city-wide party. With madcap traditions, some fans are so passionate, they and the horse racing have actually become one. Do we want to see what's inside the smoker? Yeah. Unforgettable feasts and riotous tailgates. These are beautiful women in formal hats that I think are about to get freaky. Get ready for the derby like you've never seen it before. Across the country, armies of super fans are descending on some of the wildest, most iconic events the world has ever seen. Huzzah! I'm Adam Richmond. What's going on, Arctic Man? Voila. And I'm marveling at their ingenuity, sampling their culinary creations, and diving headfirst into their traditions. And just like them, I want to bring something truly original to the celebration. Are you not entertained? This. Fandemonium. It's the 139th running of the Kentucky Derby here at Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. The Derby is the first and most legendary leg of horse racing's Triple Crown. 20 of the nation's finest three-year-old thoroughbreds buy to make history before the eyes of the world in this one and a quarter mile run for the roses. The fan base stretches across all society. And what I love the most about it is the fact that the festivities aren't just confined to here at the track. Over 150,000 fans fill Churchill Downs on race day. And in the week leading up to the event, they throw a citywide party teeming with age-old derby tradition. From mint juleps to glamorous bonnets. You have a Versace dress in your closet? This is the time to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody puts on their feathers. I mean, it's, it's not just the horses that are trotting out. I'm joining the celebration 150 yards away from the track in the parking lot. Now, inside the grounds of Churchill Downs, tailgating is not allowed at all. But outside the grounds, people are tailgating all the way. And there's one fan who's been elevating the tailgate tradition for over a decade. The ambiance of the Derby is so exciting. It's a two minute race, but this is kind of what we gravitated towards was all the fun that's outside of the track. This is Andy. 37 years ago, his dad tailgated on the very same spot with one modest motorhome. Carrying the torch, he decided to go bigger and built an Olympic-sized tailgate village that hosts 300 fans. Rather than go to different bars around Louisville and stuff, we kind of create our own. And he's created the ultimate party HQ, complete with full bar service, stools handcrafted into saddles. Is that a stripper pole? It's a pole for dancers. And his masterpiece, a 12-foot, 400-pound bar, custom-built in Wisconsin, and specifically reinforced to support a raucous pastime. These are beautiful women in, like, dresses and formal hats that I think are about to get freaky. Well, we may be here for horses, but baby girl, drop down and get your eagle on. <laughs> Hard requires hearty sustenance. And this tailgate's got the best man for the job. What is up, dude? Uh, how you doing, bro? How you doing? Meet Reed, a professional pit master with barbecue in his blood. For the last two months, he spent nights and weekends fabricating a six by four foot steel smoker. Hefty enough to bring the bounty of his life's work to Derby. How much food do you have to bring pound wise to uh, feed the masses here? I'd say we're probably looking at about 600 pounds of smoked meat. We'll, we'll serve it till it's gone. 600 pounds. Do we want to see what's inside the smoker? Yeah! Give the people what they want. Holy s. Valiant Feast, ample enough to feed about a thousand hungry fans, includes slow-smoked brisket, juicy pork butt, and his homemade smoked sausage. We're gonna be slinging a barbecue, uh, you know, till the cows come home tonight. 
But there's one more mouth-watering morsel that he's given the special derby touch. St. Louis ribs, we salt brown them overnight. They get a house blend of five spice. Right. And then we're finishing them up with a little bit of julep glaze, which basically is a bourbon mint infused uh, Carolina barbecue sauce. It is delicious. Oh, my God. While homemade barbecue in the parking lot is key to the Derby experience, there's a Louisville dining institution nearby with its own delicious tradition that I have to try. It's not just the horses that have to fuel up for the big race. Fans, jockeys, owners, trainers. Well, they need their sustenance too, and for the past 90 years, they've been getting it right across the street from Churchill Downs, right here at Wagner's. Can you personally, as a local, have a derby week without a visit to Wagner's? No. no, that's, no. <laughs> this is my third time here already this week. This is Jason. Following the footsteps of his father and grandfather, this racing fanatic has ordered the same dish at Wagner's every single week for 24 years. The best biscuits and gravy in the state of Kentucky. Yeah. I'm so getting them. Buttermilk biscuits are a Kentucky classic. Wagner smothers them in sausage gravy, creating an essential fan rite of passage during Derby Week. Cheers to you, sir. That's delicious. Isn't that good? That's uh, so good. <laughs> so good. It's country gravy, so sausage, sausage drippings, flour. It's maybe the creamiest sausage gravy I've ever had. While I'm taking a bite of one derby tradition, I notice another colorful one at the counter. Is someone sitting here? You are. You look awesome. Thank you. Are you... Will you be my new boyfriend? I would love to. Is this a standard for what you always go for derby-wise, attire-wise? Yes. yes, it is. The big hat, dress, everything centers around the hat. What is the key to a great derby hat? Well, it has to not go past the woman's shoulders. Okay. Just have a little bling, and it needs to have some feathers. <laughs> Since 1875, no derby accessory has been worn with more pride than the hat. And the donning of the perfect crown isn't just a fashion statement, it's a year-long calling that costs thousands of dollars. I'm Adam Richmond, derby detective, and this is Hot Watch. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm Adam Richmond with Hot Watch. Tell us about your amazing derby hat. I'm going to let it speak for itself. I went yes, and plucked seriously? the butterfly straight out of a garden in Brazil. Uh huh. And then I added it to the hat. Is it a big social faux pas if you wear the same hat twice? No, no. All this hat banter has made me hungry. So to cap off my day, I'm heading down the road to a village of vendors underneath the freeway, home to some of the most creative and innovative grub I've ever seen. Is that real? It's the day before the Kentucky Derby, and diehard superfans have transformed Louisville into a citywide celebration. I'm at the culinary epicenter five miles north of Churchill Downs, Chow Wagon. Right here on the banks of the Ohio River, a bunch of vendors set up shop for the nine days leading up to the big race. Upwards of 50 vendors sell the usual festival favorites, but a few ingenious individuals have created dishes that aren't just crowd pleasers, they're fast becoming Derby Week traditions. From Hawaiian shave ice served out of a giant pink pig. Thank you. Is that real? To an unprecedented twist on a carnival classic, red velvet funnel cake. They actually use the same ingredients, vanilla, cocoa powder, red food coloring. We even use cream cheese icing. You can't have red velvet without cream cheese icing. It was so good. This is an aphrodisiac. People could keep their Barry White and their oysters. I've never had anything like it. A little bit almost like evocative of a beignet with the cakiness. Thank you on behalf of humanity and funnel you cake eaters welcome. everywhere. The antioxidants here alone have drawn me in. 
Dude, is, is this your spot? Yes, sir. Andrew is a farmer who's made a 300-mile pilgrimage to introduce the fruits of his labor to the Derby faithful. Certainly around Derby week, you hear about the julep, you know, the hot browning. How has the blueberry been received in uh, the bluegrass state? Uh, you know, we get a lot of weird looks. People have warmed up to it and, you know, they come back and back. This Berry Boundary Breakers masterpiece is a homemade blueberry cobbler, topped, of course, with blueberry ice cream. Mom, you so would love this. May I wash my homemade blueberry cobbler down with your blueberry coffee? Absolutely. Blueberry muffin, blueberry scone, blueberry pie, blueberry cobbler, blueberry ice cream, blueberry popcorn, blueberry soda. As night falls, I'm heading to the outskirts of Louisville to attend the most legendary backyard party ever thrown in the name of Derby. 17 and a half miles east of Churchill Downs in an area called Middletown for the past 13 years on a one and a half acre piece of property, a one of a kind party called the Hillbilly Outfield has been taking place. It's an experience unlike any we're likely to find Derby Week. What's going on? How you doing? Is th this is your uh, your swanky affair, my dude? Oh well, yeah, there's about ten of us to throw it. Meet Mark. This is the culmination of his 13-year mission to bring the excitement of the infield into what he calls the outfield, right in his buddy Jim's backyard. Yeah, we wanted to do something really for the people of Louisville. We wanted to give them kind of like a homey feel, something that you're not going to get in any other backyard party. They spent all year and over $20,000 bringing their three-day, 600-person party to life. It's like a miniature town with street signs, beer trucks, ATM machines, and entire structures built just to celebrate Derby. Oh, look, they built the spires from Churchill Downs. That's pretty awesome. Recreational options range from cornhole tournaments to a full mini golf course, complete with a one-of-a-kind clubhouse. Is there someone dropping a deuce in there? Or like, Here's your golf balls. Wait, see so if to reach into the dookie chute to get your balls? Yep. Ah. Yep, a lot of fiber. A lot of fiber right there. Take me a little bit further back. What else we got going on back right, here? Bob. So over here. The food, yeah, the food served under the, uh, in the garage here. This is someone's private property. You have a full cafeteria here. Yeah, right here we got burgoo. Basically, I think it's Kentucky speak for anything you got left out of the garden. Whose recipe is the burgoo? Brit's. I don't know how you're doing that. Meet Brit, this year's head chef of the outfield. He's bringing Derby Dining back to basics with no-nonsense, old-style Kentucky stews. Hillbilly vegetables, that's one of Britt's specialties, made in a garbage can. A builder by trade, Britt doesn't just bring culinary skills to Derby. He's designed an inspired makeshift steamer that's perfect for feeding the masses. Take yeah. a little water pan, throw it in the bottom of the garbage can. Fill it up with about, you know, four or five inches of water. Throw some beer in there. Throw some beer in. Throw some beer in okay. there. And we steam the vegetables. The garbage can steams Brit's eight specially spiced root veggies before he tops them off with homemade kielbasa, bratwurst, and breakfast sausage. You made this? Yes, yeah, sir. Where's your wife? Hey, Susie! Hey, Susie! She won't eat it. <laughs> Behind every good man is a good woman. And you can vouch he made this sausage. Yes. This didn't fall from heaven and an angel didn't no. make it in a kitchen. No. Oh my God, so good. You are lucky to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving Brit and his divine creation, I head deeper into the hillbilly outfield where I come across a truly bizarre fan tradition. What the hell is that? Not on the infield, you're in the hillbilly outfield. It's Friday night before the Kentucky Derby. I'm at a town-sized celebration held in a super fan's backyard. It's so epic that revelers don't just spend a few hours, they move in for three days. Oh, man. It's so professional. It's kind of remarkable to think that this isn't uh, a recognized camper, and this is someone's home. This 600-person settlement even has its own justice system, a jail where fans who party too hard are sent to sober up under the strong arm of the law. What'd he do? He was drinking. He was drinking in Kentucky during Derby Week? That's Never. all lies. 
Club Field, I gotta share a nightcap with Jim, the generous landowner who made all this possible. What are you drinking? All the beverages. Yes. How about a mint julep indeed? The mint julep. This blend of sugar, fresh mint, and bourbon has been a derby tradition for over a century. Jim's bartender, Terry, has created 11 indecently named cocktails to go with the classic. There's a drink on the menu called a booby liquor, a hillbilly punch, unless we forget the bucktooth blonde beer. So what is the most popular drink this year? The panty drop is the signature drink of the hillbilly You don't know why. All right, make sure you cut me off from here down, because crazy stuff may go down. Just one sip and just, woo! That is terrific. And thank you for taking a drink of Hillbilly Outfield. Thank you for having me. Cheers. As morning breaks, the run for the roses has arrived, and so has the rain. I'm stepping inside the walls of the iconic Churchill Downs to join the 150,000 ticket-holding fans who are in for a fun but muddy time. I am in Paddock Plaza. It is raining and people are out here in expensive clothing and they are undeterred. Towering above Paddock Plaza is the grandstand seating and luxury clubhouses costing up to $12,000, home to grand wagers and even grander hats. Excuse me, y'all. Yeah, Those are amazing. The solo cup with the roses, what is the significance? The roses, obviously, derbies. Sure. So the cup represents party. <laughs> it's like tradition and then debauchery on the bottom. Exactly. We know if you dress the part, you're going to have a hell of a lot more fun. I love them. That is unbelievable. Well, thank you. How long did this whole thing take to put together? About eight months. <laughs> she loves to do this. I love that you just call it this. <laughs> it's not she doesn't love big hats. She loves to do this. This is Karen and Terry. Derby is a $5,000 day out for this king and queen of the grandstand. This is like the quintessential derby purse. Can you see how amazing this airbrush is right here? This is Spires right here. That is like the cyclorama of the Kentucky Derby. They've spent months consulting designers and local artists to coordinate this year's Royal Ensemble. The rest of the year, what do you guys do? Grandparents. No kidding? Yep. You guys are like the coolest grandparents <laughs> everywhere. Before the horse is set off, I'm going to experience a dirtier side of the derby, where $50 gets you a spot inside the track. So this is the tunnel that leads to the infield. The infield has been linked to a very muddy, very wet, bourbon-soaked Mardi Gras. And I'm heading to the center of it all. It's just hours before the wet and muddy 139th Kentucky Derby kicks off. Something big and something very, very scary and awesome is happening here, and I have no idea what it is. But I'll tell you, we'll find out. This 26-acre infield can hold up to 80,000 fans. And since the weather has weeded out all but the hardcore, it's pure mayhem. Is this your soiree here? Driving over six hours from Michigan, this army of muddy revelers isn't just undaunted by the rain, they've ingeniously used it to their advantage. We were afraid because we uh, a punch yeah. pond was being left out there. And we were afraid it was going to get rain on, so we bought a tarp to cover it. And we decided to use it as a slip and slide. Three, two, one. And just like that, a $20 tarp has become the infield's number one attraction and the start of a new fan tradition. This is 
unbelievably awesome. That's what I'm talking about. See, some fans are so passionate, they and the horse racing have actually become one. That's right. The man inside the mighty dancing steed is Jeremy, the leader of the herd. Year-round, he and his buddies are bankers, but this year for Derby Week, they ditch the desk jobs I am war horse. to become the champion stallions of the infield. You guys assume full-on like horse identities? Absolutely. We had a race. Who won? Always bet on black. Will you go full horse next year? Uh, only from the waist down. You heard it here first. Fans of the Kentucky Derby have initiated me into their celebrations. I pray. By breaking the shackles of tradition. Ah, letting me plunge into their obsessions. A lot of fiber right there. And raising the bar for parties. And now it's my turn to share something with them. And no, it is raining outside. Are our spirits high inside? <laughs> With the aid of two lovely derby darlings, I present a platter of southern delights served in style. Roasted turkey infused with bourbon, the nectar of the derby faithful, and mouth-watering barbecue pork on Kaiser rolls. And of course, ice-cold mint juleps to wash it all down. For your love, your passion, your love of history, your true fandomonium, I salute you, I say cheers, and I say I'll see you next year. Cheers! Yeah!